Hello everyone, this is Kevin from Mad Heuristics. As you can see, the time right now is 10.33pm, Friday 27, 2019. But this video will only be released on 2nd of October, after the last paper of PSLE 2019. Okay, why is that so? The reason is, I want your child to focus on what are the remaining papers are. Okay, have a good rest, sleep well, and just go for the next few papers that you have remaining. I want your child to be in the best state of mind, rather than to recap these questions that they could have gotten it wrong. Okay, but the purpose of this video is to show how these problems, how some of the toughest problems in the PSLE paper can be broken down simply using spatial visualization techniques and looking for patterns. So this is one of the problems that was described to me by one of my students. The figure below shows five identical semicircles. Find the diameter of one circle and find the perimeter of the figure. So if you would like to try this on your own first, pause the video because I will begin my explanation now. Alright, so when you look at this figure itself, there seems to be very little information on how the diameter could be found. So let's break it down into these two semicircles alone. Now we observe that this gap here is 22 cm. Now, what if we are to take it away? And just imagine that we are to slide this in here. Okay, so if you observe, this gap that it has slid through would appear over here. This gap distance will be the same as this distance over here. This distance will be the same distance over here. So if we trace back a few steps, we can say that this 22 cm should also be the same as this distance here. So if we are to superimpose this on the figure, this distance will be 22 cm, which means that this distance over here should be 10 cm. Okay, and going by the same reasoning, this 22 cm would also be the distance from here to here. Hence, we can also say that this portion must also be 10 cm. Okay. So the diameter of the circle will be very easily found from here. It would simply be 10 cm plus 10 cm plus 16 cm to give you 36 cm. Okay, show your working on how you got the 10 cm. We take 22 cm minus 12 cm to give us 10 cm first. The next part <coughs> asks to find the parameter of the figure. So this will be quite simple. The parameter would be the lengths of all the outer boundaries. Okay, so what does the outer boundary in this figure consist of? It consists of five semicircle semicircles circumference and all these lengths over here 22, 12, 16, 12 and 22. So since the, the pi value wasn't given to me, I'm just going to use pi by itself. Okay, so we have 22 cm plus 12 cm plus 16 cm plus 12 cm plus 22 cm plus 5 copies 
of the circumference of the semicircles, which is half times pi times diameter, 36 cm. Okay, simplifying all that would give us 84 plus 90 pi cm. Okay, so these take note that these papers were iterated from my students. Maybe they missed out something. It could be not it could be the case that this is not the exact same question that we are talk, discussing. Okay, there may be some irregularities here. So I see I beg your pardon for that. Alright. Then next up <coughs> is the one on patterns. Now study the figure below. In figure one, you have one white triangle. In figure two, you have one white triangle and three colored triangles. In figure three, you have six white triangles in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, and three colored triangles in total. And in figure four, you have got ten colored triangles and six white triangles. So part A asks to find, or rather to fill in the table for figure 5. Part B asks, what is the total number of colored and white triangles for figure 250? And what is the percentage of colored triangles in two, figure 250? So let's look at it this way. In figure 5, one of the ways that you can deal with a pattern is, to break it down first. How does this figure change? The way it changes is that every even in every even row the colored ones will be added. Colored triangles will be added. And every time it is odd the white triangles will be added. So when we go on to figure 5, we can see that we will be adding on more triangles over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if you're adding on 9 white triangles over here, There'll be nine. You know, there'll be six plus nine to give you fifteen here. There'll be ten colored triangles still. So that settles part A. For part B, what is the total number of colored and white triangles for Figure two hundred fifty? So to deal with this, it helps to extend out the table a little. If this is your total over here, you can see that your total number of triangles will be 1. In figure 1, this will be 1. In figure 2, this will be 3 plus 1, 4. In figure 3, this will be 3 plus 6, 9, 16, and 25, and so on. So if you have been following my Facebook Live sessions, it during the sessions on spatial visualization and looking for patterns, I often ask students to memorize the square numbers. Like 1 times 1 equals to 1, 2 times 2 equals to 4, 3 times 3 equals to 9, 4 times 4 equals to 16, and so on. Because doing this will help you to recognize patterns more easily. Okay, all these would give you square numbers. And this is 1 times 1. This is 2 times 2, this is 3 times 3, 4 times 4, and so on. So even if you are to blow the figure number up to 250,
this total would simply be 250 times 250 because the number that is multiplied by itself has to be the same as that of the figure number. Okay, so let's evaluate that 250 times 250 will simply give us 62,500. Okay, I don't have enough space here. So the last way, the last question is a trim up question. And this is a bit open-ended because there are several ways that are mathematically true to obtain your answer. But one of the simplest ways uh, Mr. Edwin David Go shared with me is that you want to look at the differences. Okay, so the trick here is to extend out your table and analyze the total and difference. If you look at the difference here, the white triangles is 1. The difference here is 1 minus 0 to give you 1. The difference in this case, however, you can see it has flipped over. Now your colored triangles is more than your white triangles. So this is 2. The difference here is going to be 6 minus 3 to give you 3. The difference here will be 10 minus 6 to give you 4. And so on and so forth. And within the figure numbers, you can see that it behaves differently when it is odd or even. When this is odd, you have more white triangles than colored triangles. When you have an even figure number, your colored triangles will be more than your white triangles. So, at figure 250, this is an even number. The difference here would simply be 250 because the difference is exactly the same as that of the figure number. So with that in mind, since we know the total and we know the difference, if we compare the colored and the white triangles, just let me see if my face is blocking. Uh, it's not. Okay, colored versus the white ones. There'll be 250 more over here with 62,500 as the total. So when you compute this using your comparison models, you will find that... Okay, actually for this, it's easier if you add this on. Okay, you add on 250. You divide the whole thing by 2. Okay, let me check whether it's blocking. Okay, you will obtain 31375. So you have 31,375 colored triangles in figure 250. Which means to say that the percentage will be 31375 out of a total of 62,500 multiplied by 100%. And this would give us 50.2%. And this will settle part C. Perfect. Okay, 